Whether you're a fan or not of Tesla and Elon Musk, it is impossible to deny the impact Tesla has had on the automotive industry as a whole, specifically EVs. And while Teslas are well known for their funny quirks, minimal interiors, and giant center screens, one of the most impressive features I've had the chance to experience is the full self-driving. That's now become available as a monthly subscription rather than having to shell out over $10,000 to access it, which is exactly what what I've done to witness firsthand the new and improved supervised full self-driving under the release code 12.5. Now release 12.5 is a pretty big deal for Tesla owners as it now allows you to truly sit back and relax as the vehicle drives you to destination rather than having to maintain your hands on the steering wheel, which I've always found kind of defeated the purpose. One of the main new features in 12.5 making this all possible is the vision-based attention monitoring, which utilizes the cabin camera camera to determine driver attentiveness through analyzing your eye positioning on the road, rather than through physical resistance on the steering wheel, such as previous versions. Now, if you're wondering if you're still allowed to wear shades while in full self-drive, well, Tesla's working on this for an upcoming release with vision-only driver monitoring with sunglasses, which will be really cool, and I'm looking forward to trying that out. Additionally, as we can see from the release notes for the current version installed on my Model 3, Tesla claims full self-drive will make lane changes, select forks to follow your navigation route, navigate around other vehicles and objects, and make left and right turns, all of which are really impressive claims. And for upcoming improvements in a future release, we can expect to see earlier and more natural lane change decisions, vision-only driver monitoring with sunglasses, as I just said, end-to-end -end on highway, and full self-drive on the cyber truck. All right, so these are some pretty bold claims and improvements, and naturally, we'll be putting all of this to the test in today's video. Like and subscribe. All right, so here we are on the field where I currently parked in a parking lot here at the marina in my hometown, and I've set a nice little trajectory here up to a grocery store. Why this trajectory? Because we're going to be exiting a parking lot going around a roundabout, which that is not correct. So we'll see how it, it, it reacts here. We have a bunch of left turns as well, a bunch of stops, stops, lights, as well as we're going to be merging onto the highway here, doing a left turn at a very busy intersection and then navigate us into a parking lot. Once we get to the parking lot, we'll also do a auto park to see how that reacts, even though it's not um, fully reliant on the 12.5 update, it's still always really fun to do. So we are currently uh, parked in the parking spot. Let's do that right now. Just a couple little things here in autopilot. Uh, we have it, of course, on the full self-driving supervised, which is what comes with the new 12.5 update. For the driver profile, we're just going to leave it on average because I'm not necessarily looking for an assertive or chill driving uh, experience right now. I just wanna see how it reacts in its basic form. And we're gonna pretty much leave everything else as is. I shut off automatic set speed offset yesterday um, because it was accelerating and driving way too fast in a construction zone, uh, which could have, you know, of course, given me a big fine and ticket. So we're just gonna leave it on uh, off for now. All right, so with that said, let's put it in drive and we will take off. So I'm gonna click on self-drive and it is already taking off. Okay, very quick left turn right out of the parking spot. It is hugging the line. Okay, this is kind of stressful right away. Okay, it took off way too fast. I didn't even have time to look, not gonna lie. Uh, but obviously it was looking, otherwise it wouldn't have taken off. So, okay, it's putting the right turn signal at the right time, looking around to see if there's any objects or anyone coming. Here we have a speed bump. Is it going to slow down? Didn't really slow down, but it went the correct speed right now. It has since slowed down considering the truck that just came up here. Okay, so here is the roundabout. Let's see how it fares in this roundabout that has these um, low curbs as well, which on my way here, it actually drove over. As you can see, these low curbs. 
slowing down at the adequate time, turning, making sure there's no other vehicles. Left turn is pretty perfect. We're gonna be going straight now. That was excellent. All, all around, that was excellent. Maintained a nice speed. We have the left turn signal on as we're going here. This guy is driving into the intersection. What's it doing? It let the guy go. All right, so I'm not sure if it understood that the guy was midway through, but it let the uh, guy turn left and then proceeded to turn left. Honestly, not bad considering he was kind of blocking the intersection. We have a cyclist up here. No issue whatsoever for now. As you can see, we are driving at the correct speed of 40. All right, so it has slowed down for the speed bump. It identified that and went over the speed bump at the perfect speed and then accelerated back up to a comfortable speed considering there's a vehicle in front of us. All right, the distance that it's keeping is perfect. It's pretty much the exact distance I would keep stopping at the stop sign, identifying and accelerating. Nice acceleration, pretty much the exact speed I would have matched. Didn't really slow down for that speed bump right there. Not a problem though, because the speed was ample and adequate. Same thing here, no slowdown for the speed bump, but going over it at around 40 has been totally fine. All right, now we're approaching an intersection. We'll see how it reacts to this since it is right after a small little curb. Excellent reaction for now. So we're at an intersection, red light, in sort of a curb. It's given about one car length of space to the car in front, which is exactly what I would have done as well. Green light now. Taking off perfectly. We have someone with their left turn signal. Everything is fine. We're maintaining the speed limit of 50 up to a stop sign. And I would also say that we're in the correct area of the lane as well. Quite perfect. Taking off from this stop sign, giving ample space to the cars parked on the side. For now, I'm pretty impressed. It is driving basically exactly how I would drive. All right. Up to a stop sign, stopped at the perfect distance of the stop sign, maybe a two second stop here, and we are off once again. Very nice acceleration. Nothing too abrupt. In past versions, it would accelerate really fast, which I wasn't a fan of. It has done it a couple times in 12.5, but overall, I'd say 80% of the time, it does a perfect acceleration that doesn't um, do any abrupt. Okay, excellent right turn signal at around 150 meters i would say from the stop it is a green light here with a green arrow Ooh, man it is hugging the curb it really likes to hug the curb though that is something that i'm not a huge fan of i'd like it if it gave it a bit more space on the right side um last thing i need is curb rash did that very well though accelerated up Perfectly left lane turn with the signal once again, slowing down at the exact area that I would have, considering we are coming up to a red light. <clears throat> and now we're doing our first left turn at a busy intersection. So let's see how it performs here. All right, we're taking off here. It's a bit confused considering this is a huge semi truck and we are now going on the yellow light though due to the fact that this truck took so much time. 
All in though, everything has been pretty decent considering the left turn, right signal. We have some cyclists upcoming. It has stopped for the cyclists. Wow, oh, and now it, okay. Excellent. It saw the cyclists come up, stopped and let them pass, which is exactly what I would have done. And very impressive. Oh, okay. What's going on here? It went to the left side of these pickets in the middle of the road for the speed. That's definitely not permitted. However, considering there was a vehicle on the other side, it gave itself a bit more space, which is pretty impressive that it was able to estimate how much space it would have to recorrect. No, that's honestly really impressive that the vehicle was able to determine that. Same thing right here. We're coming in between these speed all right it has came down all the way to a creep which i don't necessarily hate considering it is extremely narrow and it's giving itself ample uh, space to make sure that it's not hitting these speed indicators might be a bit intense as to how slow it's coming up right now it basically came to a full stop which if there were people behind me right now they'd be honking and they'd be extremely upset so all right, I mean, it went through it without hitting it, but <clears throat> should be able to go through those a bit quicker because, again, if there were people behind me, they'd be extremely upset and, uh, and honking. Excellent stop at the stop sign here. Now we're coming into oof, the parking lot, right turn. Oh, where are we going? We are going into, all right, so at destination, it seems to have issues. Right now we're at a grocery store and it's bringing us into the loading dock over here. So I'm just gonna recorrect. That is one thing I've noticed a couple of times with full self drive is when you get to destination, it kind of doesn't know what to do or where to go. Uh, so if this was like a robo taxi, for example, it would have dropped us off behind the grocery store in the loading dock, which of course is unacceptable. Um, I'm assuming in future updates, it'll be able to bring you into the parking lot, like right here, for example, and then park itself. Right now, basically every drive where I've used self-drive, it's brought me to destination, pretty much no issue. But then when I get to destination, I take over and have to park. For example, right here, let's park ourselves now in this stop, in this spot, I mean, it always does a really good job of auto parking. That is probably one of my favorite features, not because I'm not able to park, just because it's fun to see the car do its thing. And of course I could park a lot quicker than this, but it's just really cool seeing it park on its own. And it also parallel parks. So if you're not the best at parallel parking, this could be a good option for you as well. Excellent and perfect park. Let's start, <clears throat> we're in this sort of weird little parking lot here that has no lines, and let's see. Be attentive, keep your eyes on the wheel. All right, it needed a little bit of gas to start going. And now let's take off and see how well it fares. So right signal as I suppose you should even in a parking lot. Creeping up to the line here, there's a sign in the way. There are no vehicles. As always, relatively tight on the right turn, but seemingly it's not hitting anything. Again, one car length, which is pretty much what I would expect and what it seems to be doing at all times, uh, which is great. We have our right turn signal on. We're merging onto a bridge now and it gets pretty narrow in the bridge so hopefully it's able to properly navigate that we have a green light and let's take off <clears throat> all right we're in the lane very good very well done Now, one downside of 12.5 right now is that, well, it doesn't have the sunglass feature that is coming up. So if I put sunglasses on, it is really bright today. So I would like to have sunglasses on, but I'm assuming in a couple of seconds here, it's gonna tell me 
attention monitoring unavailable sunglasses use detected so i have to take those off otherwise it will give me a strike that is one of the upcoming features that I should roll out hopefully uh within a couple of weeks and now we are back to the attentive and active attention monitoring definitely hugs the right side quite a bit but we are properly in the lane here As you can see, I don't know if you can see, but this bridge has three lanes and the middle lane is closed to traffic, but it switches every 12 hours. So right now only this lane is open and is sticking in the lane. Wouldn't have any reason right now to pass anyone anyways, but um, it's doing a good job of just staying in the lane. <clears throat> we are now coming up to a very busy intersection. Perfect slowdown, identifying the cyclists, giving them ample room. Very good. All right, now we're coming up to a left turn at an intersection that's quite difficult sometimes, even uh, as a driver. So I'm excited to see how it's going to fare. Have the left lane, uh, the left turn signal, I should say, on coming into the correct lane. Now, what makes this a bit tricky is that people usually like the arrows turn. So right now it's green. People are going to try to turn left up here, but then people are coming straight. So let's see what it ends up doing. Right now it's acting quite perfectly. Not engaging into the intersection right yet. It's starting to turn, but there's a vehicle upcoming, so it still hasn't gone. That's perfect. Curious to see if it's going to go on the red. It is now yellow and it is perfectly engaging. Wow, that was excellent. That was excellent. Holy cow, I am so impressed. Now, one thing I'm curious about, there's a lot of no turning on reds here uh, in my town. So I'm curious as to whether or not it would be able to identify that and not turn at a red. I haven't had that opportunity yet where I'm at a red light first and there's a no turn on the red but I'd be curious. Let me know down in the comments if you're, uh, if you're aware of what would happen. All right, now green light. There's a lot of pedestrians crossing the road. So I'm gonna get ready to take over here. It's going into the right lane. The pedestrians have all passed. It's doing the right turn pretty perfectly. And now I'm gonna take over because I'm going into this parking lot. All in all though, that went, uh, that went really well. I'm really impressed. All right, so as we just witnessed here, full self drive version 12.5 is pretty well nothing short of amazing. It is able to fully bring you from point A to point B without really ever touching the steering wheel. Now, I continued driving around quite a bit. I've probably used the full self drive feature for a couple of hours total now, and it is really remarkable. So not only is it able to uh, you know, put the turn signal on, make right and left turn signals very well. It stops for pedestrians, it stops for bicycles, it's able to um, view and see bicycles coming in advance as well as other cars blocking the intersection and letting them go. So, you know, a courteous uh, way of driving, which is actually a really nice touch considering so many people on the road aren't courteous, but it's able to essentially analyze what's going on and make decisions in real time as to how it's going to interact with not only itself, the vehicle, but other vehicles and pedestrians on the road, which of course is what we would expect. One of the most notable examples though that I found really crazy is at a T intersection, we had right of way, but the individual came up to the stop sign and was basically in the middle of the lane blocking somewhat the intersection. So instead of going around the vehicle, even though we did have right of way, it slowly stopped and let the other car go, essentially making that decision, well, oh, okay, the person's already in the intersection, might as well let them go. And it was a really smooth and seamless um, interaction on the road. Couple things to note though, that will be really nice um, for improvements in the future, which I sure, I'm sure they will do. Uh, first and foremost, it has a really hard time navigating around uh, objects on the road, in this case specifically, speed pickets. 
So I don't know where you live, but here in Ottawa Gatineau, Canada, we have a lot of these speed pickets that they put in the middle of the road, essentially just to keep people's speed down. It's sort of like an alternative to a speed bump. But to go through it, it's relatively narrow and the Tesla had a difficult time engaging with those speed tickets and going at a nice speed. So it was pretty much stopping to either 10, five, or even zero kilometers per hour, analyzing and then going through slowly. Um, this is something I'm sure they're going to improve over time as it's something that's very prevalent here and would be unacceptable to continue coming to a full stop before engaging with those speed signs. Otherwise, a couple things, it has a hard time um, identifying very low curbs so a regular curb it's going to identify it even though i do find it hugs the curb a bit too much when it makes right turns it hasn't really hit a high curb which i would also expect to avoid curb rash but lower curbs it tends to have a hard time analyzing and has driven over them quite a bit which i'm hoping will also be improved on the navigation screen it does identify them but it seems to sort of skip over the fact that hey uh, I'm going to avoid that and it kind of continues hugging it and oftentimes will drive over it. So those are two main things um, that I'd like to see improvements on. Otherwise, also, it'll be really nice to have the sunglass feature so that you can wear sunglasses, view the road, and it will not tell you to be attentive. Once again, take them off or put resistance on the steering wheel. All that to say though, absolutely incredible performance and I'm really looking forward to see what the upcoming improvements to 12.5 will be. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more Tesla related content. And if you wanna see more, make sure to watch one of these two videos right here. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.